Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're gonna be following through on what I actually do to finish a brand new system that I'm building, so let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. This is your first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Links are in the description. So I had a lot of people like when I'm doing these computer bills. Some people have said, hey, you're building too fast. Other people said, you're building too slow. Hey, we want a long video. We want a short video. And... <laughs> I'm trying to satisfy all of them, but one question has jumped out a lot is a lot of people want to know what's the next steps that you do to actually get the hardware working. So what I'm going to do is I'm working on two systems. This is one that's for my um, brother-in-law. I'm actually going to be building this one, actually finish, excuse me, I finished building this one and I'm on the software part. So we're going to start from the motherboard and work our way all the way through. So hopefully this will answer some of those questions that people have asked me about doing this. So let's go ahead and cut over to the off computer. All right, there's the beep. All right, there we go. All right, so we're in the BIOS now. And for those who don't know, BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. And we're just trying to configure everything inside of here. So let me, maybe this will be out the way. All right. So the good thing is I built the system a lot of times, so it should be very straightforward to go through this. All BIOSes are different, but the main basics are the same. So let's jump over here to system first. The first we need to see is the date accurate. And no, it's not. It's actually a day ahead. So we need to change that to Wednesday. Now let's set the time. It is actually... 1240 okay the plus sign didn't work all right and it's 41 all right so this is good bios make sure sometimes you got to check the bios date to make sure it's not old this is fine all right now let's go to the bios now first off I have a thumb drive that has Windows 10 on it. You can go to the um, go to Microsoft's website, look up Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, and you can make a Windows install. And that's what I've already done here on the um, USB drive. And I actually keep that when it has all the stuff that I normally am going to go through to makes it really easy. So the first thing is we want to make sure we're booting off that first. And that's where we're at right now. So boot option number one is the USB drive. Boot option number two, we really don't need, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I have an NVMe drive in here. So actually that is this Western Digital Drive. I want that to be the second boot if we ever want to, because once you unplug the USB, they trickle up. All right. Next one is the secondary drive, but we're going to disable that because nothing is going to be installed on that. That's going to be storage. There is no CD, DVD drive, no optical drive of any way. So in other words, we're going to boot off the USB if the USB is plugged in. If not, we're going to go off the NVMe. All right. Now you have other options. I like to keep the number lock key on. Um, you can choose to do full screen if you want to. doesn't really matter. Um, I like to do a fast boot because nothing is really going to change on this. We're not changing drives. We're not doing anything like that. So that's what I have on this motherboard. And also, before I even go any further, the list of all the parts that consist in this computer are in the description under a kit link. So you can always see them there or you can get them if you want to. Those are affiliate links. So just letting you know. All right. So we got that. Now for peripherals. We, I'm not going to go into this um, initial display. We're using a APU, so it has the GPU on the CPU, so we don't have anything. Our capture card is actually in the PCIe slot, so we're actually going to do integrated graphics for our boot. 
this has LEDs on the motherboard. I'm actually going to keep them off because there's no way for you to even see them. Color doesn't matter because, again, it's off. HD audio is enabled. That's how we're getting audio in and out of the system. Above 4G decoding, I just enable this. Honestly, I don't know what it is for, but I just keep that enabled. Um, trust in computing, I really don't mess with. Super config, don't mess with that. USB, I make sure that legacy USB is on. That way, um, most keyboards are and mice are USB powered. So I just want to make sure that they are supported when the system is off. Um, all right. NVMe configuration. So we got our size. We can do tests on this, but we're good. We don't need any of that. And we don't need to mess with that. Mostly everything is automatic. I don't do overclocking on these systems because it's really not needed. This is a dedicated live streaming system. All right, chipset. Integrated graphics, auto, obviously. We're not using RAID mode. And again, most of this is just default. It's, it's good. It's picking up our um, two terabyte drive. So that's fine. Power. Um, this is what I have mine set to as church. When we lose power, what do you want the computer to do? I always have mine turned back on because most of mine are remote controlled. So if we lose power, that's a sign that I can tell if the power has been restored to that area. But this is your choice. I like to have mine set to this. Power on by mouse, all this other stuff. I leave. I don't really mess with none of those. All right. Now, let's save and exit. And the USB drive is still there. Yes, save configurations. And then we're going to reboot. Now we're going to go into the Windows install. Now, before this happens, I this is me. I like to keep the system not connected to the network at all when I'm doing this because Windows, yes, it pulls updates. But also, I like to avoid a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, it asks a whole lot of things. And I like to disable a whole lot of stuff when I'm doing this. All right. Now, you don't need an activation key to install Windows. You can install it without an activation key. I will be adding one later, but we can go through this whole process. So let's go ahead and next. Obviously, it booted off the USB fine because we're here. Install. Right here, like I said, I don't have a product key. I will get one later. This is going to be Windows Home. Next. And the good thing is this is on a USB 3 drive, and this is an NVMe. So this process goes really, really fast. Accept the license. Next. I want to do a custom install. And here's our two drives. I want to pick the NVMe drive. And then, I mean, you could make a new drive here if you wanted to. I like doing this in Windows because it just goes faster. So I pick the drive I want, which is the NVMe drive, the faster drive. Let's go next. And then it's going to copy everything from the USB drive and start the installation. So I'm going to speed this up and just show you how fast this actually goes. All right. So what we're going to do now is obviously pick our location, our region. And I'm still not connected to the internet. Pick our layout. See, and it's asking, I'm going to say, I don't have internet right now. Are you sure? Yes. I don't want to do a limited setup. Now, for my systems, I always call this media. And I don't put a password on it. Let them put their own password. And then we're going to disable all of this stuff that we don't want. All right. Turn all that off. Do you want to access across? No. No, I don't want to use Cortana. All right. Now, if we had did other stuff, it goes a lot longer than that. But now that we got this, 
I'm going to hook up this to the internet now that this is all done. All right, so we are on our Windows desktop. You might have saw it blink a couple of times because now that it has the internet. It's pulling down drivers. But we're going to go through and manually do a lot of this stuff. So, again, based on the specs, I use AMD systems. It makes it really easy for my drivers. So, the very first thing we're going to do is let's hit the Windows key and the letter X. And we're going to go to Disk Management. Now it's detecting our second drive. So we're going to format that. Simple volume. And I'm going to have to come back and change this drive letter. Actually, let me cancel this. I'm going to unplug the USB. And then let's do that again. Right click, simple, new simple volume, next, next. Now we're on the D drive. See, this is just me being weird. I like my stuff to be sequential. So the main drive is the C drive. Then we go to the D. Don't need a name. Pick the format volume if you want. Perform a quick format. Next. And finish. All right. Now our drive is done. Now I'm going to put my thumb drive back in. Now it should be at the E drive now. All right, press the Windows key and the letter E at the same time, and it opens up this computer, and there's our drive. Now, we have our E drive. Now, this is what I do because we do this for storage. What I'm gonna do is now go to this D drive, and I'm gonna make a folder called Videos, because this is where everything is gonna be stored at. And now, I'm going to right-click on the default videos folder, go to Properties, Location. And now, we're going to move this to that newer drive, which is just for storage. Because this is, if they decide to record in OBS, this is going to be the drive that they go to. Select, and OK. Yes. And it's easy because nothing is there, so it makes it really straightforward. So you'll see how this benefits from here. All right, now on this thumb drive, I actually have a collection of all the stuff that I normally installed anyway. So this makes it really easy. So we're gonna go here, well first, we have the OBS bundle. And all the systems I ever build, I always give this as a good starting place for their live stream. Up oh, and I put that on the D drive, should have been on the C. All right, now I'm going to go to the basics because we need to do the drivers for the motherboard first, then we're going to do the drivers for the video card. So, this is what I have here. But the good thing is, it's going to pull down the most recent drivers, so that's good. We're going to go ahead and run that. I'm going to copy our e-missionary wallpaper and paste that over there on the pictures. All right, here's our install. So it's going to install all of our drivers, everything from the motherboard. We let that run. Now, some installs you can do at the same time, others you can't. So we're going to keep that minimized. We are going to run this file that normally comes, forces you to install it anyway when you're trying to install OBS. So I just decided to just save it and just run it this way. Just some run times that are needed. All right, the chipset software installer is still running fine. This ran fine. All right, and now, see, this is done, and it's asking for a restart. We're not going to do that. 
All right, so now let's try and knock out as many other installs as we can. Um, the media controller is no longer needed because that's built into OBS. So let's go ahead and install Chrome next. And even though I don't use it, I'm going to go ahead and install Microsoft's Edge setup because if you don't, it's going to annoy the daylights out of you asking for it to be updated. All right, we're going to make this our default browser. But while we're doing this, let's go to a OBS project.com and let's get the most recent OBS and see this is why I don't like the edge it just takes over your entire screen and you don't have any choice and it just forces itself on you <sighs> then another pop-up no I don't want to install your stuff Thank you. Is it done? Yay. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to install this. And actually, I'm going to take this and copy this to my thumb drive because this has since been updated. All right. So while that's working, let's go ahead and run the OBS installer. Install through everything. Now, when we did the stuff for our drivers, we're going to get also for our sound and everything as well, too. So I'm going to close this because I don't want to launch OBS after this because we got some other stuff we need to install. Now, we have a Decklink Mini Recorder 4K as our capture card. We need to install the drivers for that. And the most recent version is 11.6 as of the time of this recording, which is October 14th, 2020. Just make sure every time you do this that you do have the latest drivers. Let that one run. Now this one always says it needs to restart, um, but I'm not going to do that. See, there's another pop-up. Restart is required. I'm not going to do that right now. I want to get as much stuff installed as possible. All right, so this is finished. And no, I will restart later. So let's get rid of this old one here. Now, if they had an ATEM or something like that, I would install this, which actually is old. I actually need to do um, 8.5. So that needs to go away up as well. All right. But so far, the only thing else we got to install now is the video card. So let's go ahead and let it restart. And then we're going to start walking through making the changes that we need to make this a lot easier and I'll take, turn off all this privacy stuff. Let's see how fast the reboot is. I did not alter this at all. Oh, I might. See, and there we go very fast all right so let's go back and first let's get rid of all this here I'm not going to use that let's go back to our drive our basics now we're going to install our software for the gpu that's built into the cpu this is also going to in um include a lot of the encoder settings that are going to show up in OBS. Okay. 
Alrighty, so we're gonna do 2091, because that's the latest. Now while this is working, let's go ahead and change it to our our wallpaper, which for whatever reason, they don't let you do it because it's not activated, which is silly. Um, but anyway, all we're gonna do is just right click on this and set as background, and there, you get around it. I don't know why they did that. But there we go, there's our wallpaper, and now we're just waiting for this to finish. And well, actually, while it's doing that, we can do some other stuff as well. Let's go to our system settings and we're going to go to privacy and we're going to turn all this stuff off. Literally almost everything I'm turning off. Um, diagnostics, I'm going to feedback is never so that we don't get any pop ups. Store your activity. No, let's clear it. Location. That should be off. And there's the graphics card that just flipped. Camera, we're going to leave on because the capture card counts as that. Um, microphone, the same thing. Voice activation, we're going to turn that off. Notifications, turn off. Account info, turn off. Contacts, off. Calendar, off. Phone calls, off. Call history, off. Email, off. Tasks off, messaging off, radios off, other devices off, background apps off, diagnostics off, automatic file, that's fine, documents off, pictures off, videos off, file system off. All of that's just so other programs have default access to read that stuff. We don't want that. All right, that's all been turned off. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is come back here and activate Windows. I have a video show you how to do that. I will link that up here at the top. So I will do that here in a second and it's gonna force me to restart. So let's restart it again. We are back, and for the most part, I think we're good. I'm gonna have to check out the um, USBs on the top of the case. All of them are kind of performing a little weird. So I just gonna make sure that the cables, like I said, haven't jiggled loose or anything like that. But it's finishing this install, and it should be done soon. I am getting ready to purchase a Windows license. All right, I do not want them to collect. Restart. very fast turnaround. All right, so now that we got this here, now we're gonna be just like the OBS Complete Bundle. Let's go ahead and, well, actually, let me do this. Let's go to the Microsoft Store. And we wanna make sure we turn all this other auto update stuff off as well too. So settings, auto app update. I mean, that's not a problem, but it just installs a bunch of games and stuff like that that I don't really think are needed. So that's why I turn that off. 
Oh, and the other thing is hit start. We're going to go to power because for whatever reason, it still thinks that people want to have the system turn off after 10 minutes. Put these all to never and we want best performance. All right. So now I am going to activate Windows. So this part has been blurred by a license from Microsoft or any other legal places. So this will be blurred. Actually, let me switch back to me and then while I type that up. All right, our Windows license is activated. Boom. Now, let's go ahead and get OBS complete bundle set up and get everything. Um, so, you know what? I messed up. Let me cancel this. I forgot. We need to update our capture card first. So we go to the Blackmagic Design folder. We're going to go to Video Setup. And let's see if it needs an update. Oh, it doesn't. Cool. All right. So this is going to be another setup that needs to be ran when you actually um, have this at your location because if I configure OBS as in streaming speed and settings, that's going to be based off my internet. It's going to be different for them. But what we're going to do is we're going to add our bundle that we had installed here. Then import, give it a second. Now let's switch to media ministry. And now we're all set up. Now, this is a little bit different because they have a deck link capture card. So we gotta make a few changes in here. So let's minimize this. Well, no, let's keep this open. We're going to go to starting. So we're going to get rid of this capture device. This is if it was USB or something like that. Because the Black Magic ones have its own item, which is here. Select it from the drop down. And they need to change whatever connection. Most likely it's going to be HDMI. We'll do OK. We're going to do this to fit to screen. We're going to lock it in place. And then we're going to move it under pre recorded video if they decide to do that. Offering works the same way because we're going to bring in audio and video. So we're going to add another deck link, but we already used it. So we're just going to add existing, which copies all of our settings. It should have been full screen. But it didn't. So let's go back here. Oh, can't do that, AJ, while it's locked. Right click, transform, fit the screen, now lock. And we can drop it. Now let me get my camera. That way we can actually test that everything is working. All right, so I have an image on this camera, and you can see audio is coming through from the camera. So if we go back to our previous scene, yay, camera is working. So whatever is connected to this will work. Um, if they have an SDI card, it needs to go to this. All right, so that's working. Be Right Back is working with music. Ending is working too. So let's go to our settings here. I can turn this off now. And let's make our settings streaming. Like I said, I'm going to leave that alone. We're going to switch this to the AMD. That's why we do this in this order because everything was installed. And because we moved the video file to the D drive. As the default, now it's automatically saved here, so that's done as well too. 
audio, we want to make sure we disable everything. And we're currently only bringing in audio through the camera. Or I don't know if they're going to be connecting their sound system. If they do, that's going to be something different. My brother-in-law knows how to do that. We would probably um, do a input capture device on each scene where we want audio to come in and just either plug it into the line in on the computer. Or you could run it into the camera. I don't know what type of camera they're going to use. All right, video, we're going to bump this up to 1080p. Might as well push it to the max so that we know what it is capable of, their connection. They run the auto configuration wizard. It will adjust that for them. All right, and we are good to go. So our outro ended, but we can always recycle it. So. This whole system is completely done from here. Now, the one thing else I would leave is, first off, I didn't even think about doing this. We have to adjust our time zone because it's saying we're on the West Coast and we're not. Let's get that. So we're at the right time. And then we're also going to configure all of this stuff because we don't need night light tablet mode or anything like that on this computer location no vpn no focus assist no screen snip i like that take screenshots um connect project is not needed boom that part is done and the other thing i forgot is I need to turn on set the notifications we don't need all this stuff just popping up all over the place. Uh, let me see, focus assist is off, yep. Uh, power we did, storage is fine. Uh, never use tablet mode. I think that needs to be a new setting that I do. Uh, All right, I think we're good. So, system's completely done. Um, you know, I could be nerd mode and leave shortcuts here on the bottom, which I would do. Let's pin that to here. And then we'll do get rid of edge. I ain't using that. Oh, I didn't set this as a default. Um, I don't like the groove music. I like the standard and we're going to change our browser to Chrome instead of edge that set our defaults. All right. Now, one last thing that I like to do is I don't know what everybody else's internet speed is. Let's clear this. I like to come in and then run all of the updates to see if there's anything that's missed. Um, your device is missing important. Yep, well, there you go. So let's do an update. Let this run. Then we're done. And it looks like there's a bunch of those. So <laughs> we're going to run that and then we'll be done. So if you have any other questions or things that I might have left out, I thought I went slow, but if I didn't, please let me know. I will try and leave timestamps in here so you can jump to whatever area that you need. But that is what I walked through. Um, doing all of my stuff i didn't test the live stream because again it's no point in me testing that when it's going to be different there but um that's about it so if you like this type of content i appreciate a like consider subscribing and hit that bell that way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry and i want to thank the patrons and the youtube members for making this video possible and you too can become a patron or a youtube member with the links below for patreon one dollar a month or for youtube at $4.99 a month and there are different perks and benefits for each one of the platforms so pick whichever one that you want either way you decide to support us i appreciate it because no matter which way you go you're helping us train media ministries all over the world thanks for watching folks this is aj and we will see you on the next video later